Hi. I want to talk to you today about something that's really important to know. If you're a TOEFL student and you have one day um, a dream of attending a, a university, an English-speaking university, and you're on that path, um, I think this is really some great information just to know the structure of how that works and how how you really get from your country to another country and who are the players that are involved in that process okay so that's what I really want to talk about and just know that when I I'm speaking I'm speaking from a perspective of an English teacher an, a TOEFL teacher and also someone who has applied to a bachelor's degree program, a master's degree program in the United States. Okay, so there might be um, other schools and other countries that work differently, um, but I'm just sharing with you my knowledge um, and from my experience, okay? From that experience. So here's the situation, right? You find yourself in your country and you have an idea that you want to come over here, but you're not really sure what the, the steps are in the process. So great, you might talk to an agency and set up a meeting with an agent. That agent will have um, maybe different schools to choose from, different pricing options. You might discuss what you want with that agent and that agent will direct you to a school that matches your uh, wants and needs. Now, here is the really important thing to know. Once your agent books a school for you, once you've selected a school over here, that agent will get a percentage of that booking. So that school, right, is basically going to give money to that agent for m making that sale. So your education is a business. Now in a beautiful world, um, I would not have it set up that way. I think education is very, very different than a business. and. Um, Anyways, um, we're not there yet <laughs> in that beautiful world, but just know that what your agent says to you will be coming from this kind of financial setup. So let's take some examples. Let's say you come in and say, oh, I, I want to go to Harvard University and they need 100 points on TOEFL and I really need an English school that has a TOEFL program that's really good where I can get my 100 points and it will prepare me for that test. So your agent says, great, I know of a program and books that program. And you say, awesome, how long do you think it'll take me? And your agent says, oh, it'll take two months. It'll take two months. Awesome, two months, not a long time, get my 100 points and I'm going to Harvard. So you, book it, you travel to your English school, um, you get into your TOEFL class, and you find out, oh no, this test is really hard. And it's gonna take me more than two months, it might take me six months, it might take me eight months to get 100 points. Maybe it'll take a year. Now, if I were this student, I would feel at first, yeah, I'd feel pretty frustrated because I had expectations that this would be a really short process. And then I come to find out um, that it's not a short process. But again, your agent might say things that either A, they, they just don't really know, or B, they're, they're, they may be saying it because of this financial structure. Um, another example, maybe you're over here and you say, I really want to study film in the United States. I want to be a filmmaker. Um, so you book a uh, school with your agent and your agent says, oh, if you want to go to university, you want to be a filmmaker, you want to go to university and study film, then you'll need to take the TOEFL. 
so they book a TOEFL course. So you come over here, you're studying TOEFL, you're working really hard, and then your teacher asks you, what kind of TOEFL score do you need? And you go, I don't know. And then I will ask, well, ask your university. So finally, you ask your university and come to find out they say, we don't need a TOEFL score. It's not necessary. You don't have to have a TOEFL score to come to our school. So you've just spent a lot of time, energy, money, uh, studying TOEFL when you actually don't even need it. So how do you avoid this situation? You. Okay, you are responsible for um, doing the research. Okay, don't depend entirely on the agent. Why? Because, again, the agent might not know the answer. They, unless they actually studied abroad and they went to a university and they understand that process and they're speaking from their experience, then they really don't know all the details that you will need to know. Okay, and they don't have to know the details. That's not their job. Okay, so, and also they're telling you things based on a certain financial structure. Okay, so how do I avoid this? How do you avoid this? Um, the first thing is know what you want. Okay, this is maybe the hardest thing. Um, to know what you want, but it's really necessary. If you want to study business, great, why? If you want your master's in management, great, why? If you want to study engineering and get your master's degree in engineering, great, why? Okay, so know what you want and why. That's the first step. Once you know what you want, the second thing to do is research your schools, your universities. And you might be thinking, wait a minute, I don't know, I, my English isn't good. Um, but if this is your eventual goal, then great, embrace the challenge because that's only going to help you build your English skills to get you ready for university. So I'm going to tell you what all, well not all, but most uh, American students do when they are looking at universities. Most American students will look at uh, rankings of schools first just to get an idea, okay? Uh, where we look for that is called, uh, it's a publication called the U.S. News and World Report. They publish rankings of schools. Um, in the US and they break it down into different categories um, you know if you're looking for uh, great graduate schools in law or in business or in um, history right they will break down all of those rankings am I recommending you apply to all the number one schools no um, just get a sense of what the competitive schools are like and what score they require so then you go on a website of that school, maybe you're checking out UCLA, maybe you're checking out um, Boston University, and you go on their website and you look at what their TOEFL score minimum requirement is and know that score. If it's confusing to you, call someone, call that department that you wanna apply for. If it's an engineering department, great. Get that number, call them up and say, hey, I'm, um, from China, I'm from Japan, I'm from Taiwan, I'm from um, Germany, and I would like to know what your minimum TOEFL score is. Or do I have to take the TOEFL? Is there another test I, I can take? Can I take the IELTS test? Do you accept that score? What's that score? Um, so call them up. And again, if you're scared about doing that because your English isn't good enough, think of it as an opportunity to improve. Because eventually, if you're going to be at that school, you're going to be talking to people at that school. So you might as well start now. Just give them a call. Okay. Um, the next thing you should do, and eventually, like this might be further down in the process, is uh, visit that school. Once you've kind of done your research as 
to what the competitive schools are. Other schools will pop up in your search that are maybe not as competitive or maybe in the middle and maybe like easier to get into. So once you have kind of a list or uh, an idea of what might be your favorite number one school, go for a visit and then you'll really get a sense of what that environment is like. And you'll get a sense of um, if you wanna live there, if you wanna study there, you'll get a sense of the people. Okay, that's, that's important. So um, again, speak to people who have gone through this experience. Talk to people who've actually applied to a university and have graduated. Because they know really what the road is like, okay? If you're only talking to your agent, they don't entirely know what that road is like, okay? So it's really up to you to do the research and just know that when your agent tells you something, um, it could be to make a sale, it could be because they wanna tell you something but they, and they just don't know, so they're making up information. Um, again, I'm not saying all agents are doing this at all. Um, you know, you might have someone who actually went through the whole journey of, of school abroad and now, great they they're a great source of information but just know that this is your life your academic career your choice your time um, your energy and it's really up to you to do the research and um, know what that university uh, will expe be expecting and that way that'll put you in a better position to know what English school will be best for you. Thanks for watching.